Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2. This video is being released at the same time as a video on the main channel, and it's all about eight inch disc drives, which is what you see sitting here. This is a five and a quarter inch disc drive that you may be familiar with, and this is an eight inch floppy disc, and this is a five and a quarter inch floppy disc. Quite a bit of difference in size, isn't there? On my main channel video, I go into great detail about the 8-inch floppy drive, specifically the one from the TRS-80 Model 2, and I get it working hooked up to this PC right here and actually image a TRS-80 Model 2 disc from a PC program onto one of these real floppy disks. I recommend that you watch the main channel video before watching this one, otherwise some of the stuff I talk about won't really make sense in context because this video is actually part of the other one at first and I cut it out and moved it here to the second channel because the main channel video was a bit too long. In this video I'm going to be talking all about disk drive termination and how you have to terminate the signals that go between the disk controller card and the floppy drive. And this applies not to just to 8 inch drives but 3.5 inch and 5.25 inch, and and inch disks on any machine that uses the Sugart drive interface like the PC, the Amiga, Atari ST and other similar machines. Not to mention, I'll talk about how this little terminator block called the disk terminator works. This is for use on the TRS-80 Model 2, and if you don't have one of these, I will explain how you can use your machine with the disk drive without this. So, without further ado, let's get to the video. So, termination. What is it? First, let's start at the interface connector for the SA800 drive. Now, this will all apply to five and a quarter inch drives as well because that's the SA400 drive and the equivalent standard. The only real difference is the connector right here. Otherwise, the signaling is, is basically the same. So if you look at this diagram here, there are signals that go from the disk drive, which is on the right, to the controller. And then there are signals that run from the host system to the disk drive. The most important thing to remember here is that some signals go from the controller to the drive and others go from the drive to the controller, right? So there's two different directions that the data is flowing. So if we scroll down a little bit in the same manual here, it's talking about the output lines. This diagram right here shows the interface signal driver receiver pair. And what I mean by pair is, for instance, if this is the disk drive on the left, and this is the index signal, as an example, it's being transmitted or sent from the disk drive here, the 7438, and it's being picked up by the drive controller. Now, it says here it uses an open collector output stage, and that is key to what we're talking about here with termination. An open collector like this chip only has the ability to pull a signal down to ground it cannot drive it to five volts because this is TTL chips, right? It can't drive it to five volts. All it can do is drive it to ground. And on a receiving end, the 7414, it says TTL right there. It's either looking for five volts or it's looking for zero volts. That's a TTL signaling. It's not transmitting or driving the signal at all. The driving is all happening on this end. Well, it says here that the cable can be 10 feet long, right? Twisted pair or just a ribbon cable like, like this ribbon cable right here. And when we talk about termination on this type of interface, because it's an open collector, something needs to pull that line, like if this is the index line, high to five volts. And it's saying here that it should be on the receiving end with 150 ohms. When this 7438 wants to send a low or a zero across this line, it grounds this line, and because it's 150 ohms, it's able to fight against that resistor, which I think will put about 33 milliamps of current on that line, and it will ground it. So this TTL chip here, the 7414, will see it as a zero, and when this 7438 is done, it releases it, and it goes back to 5 volts because it's pulled up with this resistor here, and that will see it as 5 volts. The reason for the termination being over here on this end, it's all a little bit of analog voodoo, but from my understanding, it has to do with reflection on the long cables because there's losses and signals bounce around or whatever. So having that termination resistor there is what allows it to have signal integrity over a 10-foot cable. Now, this is the floppy controller that I am using right now. It's not the one I started with when I was doing my testing, but it's the one I'm currently using. This should have termination on it for all of the signals that it is receiving. And then on the disk drive itself, 
This should have pull-up resistors for the signals that go from the controller to the drive. Now you might be asking, with a drive like this five and a quarter inch disc drive, and inside a PC, you could have two of these, you could have one of these, and how come we've never thought about termination before? Like, where do you terminate things on this drive? Now, some older disk drives actually have, um, looks like an IC chip, and that is the termination resistor block. When you install that, it actually does that pull-up resistor to five volts for the signals that are being received by the drive. And typically you would pull it out on the middle drive you would only have it on the one on the end. But like this drive right here, this five and a quarter inch disc drive, I don't know, maybe there's a jumper because there's some jumpers here. Maybe one of these jumpers enables the termination, but there's certainly no terminating resistor block on here. And I look, I have to admit, I've never even thought about that where I've put one of these on the end of the cable or I put a three and a half inch on the end of the cable and I reverse them and didn't even think about it that you need the termination on the end one. It just always seems to work. Well, why is that exactly? Well, one thing I found that's going on is in the disc controller itself. <laughs> the one I was using on this machine originally, it was um, a Prime 2 multi-IO card kind of thing. When I looked at it with my multimeter, I found that it was terminating all of the lines. Even the ones that the drive should be terminating, there were resistors pulling up to 5 volts on the card. But they were all 300 ohm resistors. They weren't 150 ohm as called for by the spec by Sugart for both the SA400, that's a five and a quarter inch drive, and the SA800, this eight inch drive. I should have mentioned that I haven't already that if you are missing the pull-up resistor entirely on one of these signals, it is impossible for that signal to work. And that's because going back to the diagram here, if this pull-up resistor is not there, the 7438, it cannot put the signal up to five volts, all it can do is pull it down. And what will happen is this 7414 here on the receiving end, when the signal is not driven down to ground by the open collector over here on the left, this is just gonna see a floating line and you might get weird readings or nothing, or I don't know, it's, it's not gonna be happy. You have to pull it up to five volts for you to get a clear five volts or zero on the receiving end. So for some reason on the signals that go between the drive and the controller, some of the lines aren't being pulled up. It's just not gonna work at all. Now this controller here, it supports four floppy drives, but otherwise it's a pretty standard controller here. This pulls up the lines to 150 ohms using this resistor pack right here. And I found when I was probing with my multimeter that while this terminates all of the signals that come into this car, the things it receives, it was also pulling up to five volts two of the lines that went to the disk drive. Not all of them, but just two. I don't know why, but it was. So I actually took the resistor pack out and I added a socket and then I uh, cut the two lines off and put it back in. So now this controller behaves to spec and it only terminates the signals that it receives. I was talking to Kevin Williams at Tech Select about this issue. He just happened to be working on a floppy drive controller and having some weird termination issues and we were discussing how it all works. And our theories are that basically, as the PC architecture kind of kept going, the cable length inside a PC was short. Thus, the need for proper termination was greatly reduced. It matters more when you have like 10 feet of ribbon cable. If you have like a foot or a couple of feet of it, it's not as much of an issue. So terminating all the lines on the controller card is probably okay. And then if the disk drives themselves uh, don't terminate at all, like you forget to put the termination resistor on, it's probably gonna work fine. And I really wouldn't be surprised if later drives like this just did away with removable termination entirely and switched to terminating all the lines with um, 300 ohms. Probably good enough to work on its own if you were plugging this drive into a spec controller where the controller wasn't also terminating. But if the controller terminates with 300 and this terminates with 300, you're gonna end up with 150 ohms which is actually still within spec. And then that kind of alleviates the need to worry about termination as much because if everything was pulling up at 300, again, the controller and two disk drives, you're gonna get about 100 ohms. It's probably fine, it's gonna work. The reason why I'm talking about all this termination stuff is that I personally didn't actually really fully understand it. So I had to read up on how it works. And if you don't have the termination right, things aren't gonna work.
Now, if you have a disc controller, you're not sure how it's terminating, it's very easy to test. Just unplug the disc drives from it and look up the pinout of the 34 pin connector here, and then check with your multimeter between the various signal pins and five volts on the card. You can find it on one of the ICs or on the ISA connector here and look for the resistance. It should be 150 ohms on all the signals that are being sent into the card. That is the proper spec, and it should not be terminating any of the signals from the card back to the disk drive, because that is the disk drive's responsibility to do that termination. And if you find that there are incorrect terminations on your card, you can modify it to make it in spec, like I did right here by uh, removing that little resistor pack. Now, when it comes to termination on the SA800 specifically, the service manual again tells us exactly how it works. It says right here in the service manual, the SA800 has been provided with the capability of terminating the four input lines, which are meant to be multiplexed by jump ring traces. Now, just as a side note, multiplexed means that these four signals actually go to each of the disk drives all at the same time. So say you have four disk drives on one cable because um, the standard supports that, right? DS0, 1, 2, and 3. Well, all four drives are receiving those signals at the same time. In order for the drive or drives in plural to function properly, the last drive on the interface must, and must should be in bold, have these four lines terminated. Termination of these four lines can be accomplished by two methods. As shipped from the factory, there are jumpers installed on the terminator blocks T3, 4, 5, and 6. Now this drive has these wires here, so it's a little bit different, but it's right here. It's these four jumpers over here on the left side. You need to remove those jumpers from all the drives except for the last one in the chain so that only the last drive is terminated. Another way to terminate is an external terminator, which must pull up those four lines with 150 ohms um, to 5 volts DC. All right, so let's zoom in on what's going on here with this drive here. So this was the internal drive on the Model 2, right? And it has these wire wrap jumpers that go from these pins here over to these pins. Well, this is a little bit of clever engineering by Radio Shack to allow greater flexibility with this system. Consider the scenario that you only have this one disk drive on the Model 2. The pins closest to the slot connector are actually these signals that are coming in here off these traces. The four pins on this side that are wire wrapped are actually the ones that are pulled up to five volts. So putting a jumper on any one of these four sets of pins will pull that signal up to five volts. If you had only one drive, you'd have to have those four jumpers on there or the system just simply wouldn't work. But what happens when you wanna connect an external disk drive set, which I think had three more disk drives in it? How would that then work? You'd have to open up the computer and remove these jumpers so that you could then plug the cable into the back and have termination on the last drive in the chain. Well, that is where this comes in. This is the terminating resistor block that is plugged into the back side or the outside of the computer. And this is the connector. This ribbon cable here goes to the connector on the back of the computer where you would plug in those extra three disk drives. If I pull this block off of here, and you can imagine that there's a cable that plugs into here and runs to the other disk drives, and in that external case, the last disk drive in the chain in there has these jumpers installed on it. That means that if we look at the chain of all the disk drives, this first connector goes to the card, the controller card. This connector here is going to this internal disk drive, and then down the cable here, this thing here plugs into the cable that plugs into the external three disk drives, everything is good. Because like I said, that last disk drive in the external case, it's got the jumpers installed. Everything is pulled up, it is all to spec. But when you disconnect the external three disk drives, all of a sudden there's no pull-up resistors anymore again, right? And nothing is gonna work. So here is where some clever engineering came in. These wires over here, you see these posts there? These are unused signals. They're just not used at all. So what Radio Shack did is they connected these four lines specifically to the pull-up resistors. So these four signals are always pulled up. Well, how does that help us for terminating this drive when it's the only one? Well, you plug this little block in and inside of here, now I haven't opened it, I am presuming, and I'm just gonna put this here as a hypothetical, I have a feeling what this block does is it takes these signals here, these four signals that are the uh, inputs to the disk drive and it routes them also to these four pins. And that has the effect of basically connecting the pull-up resistors in this drive to 
those signals. It's just taking a roundabout way because it goes from the pull-up resistors here through these traces into the cable inside this connector, which is then looped around to those four wires. If you have a TRS-80 Model 2 and you do not have this terminator block and you only have the single disk drive, you don't have the external module, not an issue. The disk drive will not work, but all you need to do is just remove these jumper wires and add the four jumpers onto these pins here, and then the drive will start working and you don't need this at all. Just keep in mind though, if you do plug in an external drive expansion thing, you will need to remove those jumpers and then plug the external drives in. For me right now in testing, I do need to use this in conjunction with this drive so that it creates that loop and uh, pulls up those lines properly. But if I grab the other disk drive I was testing with, you'll notice it actually has those jumpers installed. And that means that I can use this same cable assembly here for testing, but I don't have to connect that termination block to the cable for it to work. Actually plugging that in won't have any bad effect because all it has the effect of doing is routing those four signals over to these four signals. And you'll notice there's just nothing there. Like these pins are, are there, they're floating, there's nothing connected to them. And there are actually no traces uh, that come off of these pins on this particular disk drive. But just keep in mind, if you're gonna try to use a different eight inch drive that maybe utilizes some of these optional features here, then plugging in this resistor loop block could cause issues because it will have the effect of shorting these lines to these lines. All right, with that, that's gonna be it for this video on termination. Like I said at the beginning, I recommend you watch that other video first. So if you haven't seen that, uh, check the link in the description. I will have a link to the main channel video that is the companion piece to this one, which is much more in depth, all about disk drives and controllers and writing to disks and how to make a disk image, all that kind of stuff. Hopefully the content of this video made some sense. I'm usually just sort of talking into the camera uh, to the best of my abilities. So if it wasn't all totally clear, uh, definitely put some comments down below. I'll try to clarify things a little bit if I can. And as usual, I'd like to thank my patrons. Their names are scrolling up right over here behind under my hand. If you wanna become a patron yourself, you can do so at the link in the description. And if you haven't already done so, I'd really appreciate a subscribe to my second channel. It really helps me out with the whole YouTube algorithm garbage and a thumbs up if you like this video and all the other YouTube stuff. And um, I guess that's gonna be it. So stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Whoops, <laughs> bye.